We, uh, we're a little too soft hearted sometimes. <laughs> sometimes you just gotta rip the plants out. That's right. You need a shovel? Okay, we can get you a I'm shovel. Gonna help you. Good morning, beautiful people. It is actually a chilly morning. We had a, not a surprise frost, but you know, one of those frosts that uh, you hate to see because everything's already in bloom. Uh, we have a bunch of trees out in the orchard, the peach trees, the nectarine trees, stuff like that. Yeah. It is in full bloom, and this uh, surprise frost just annihilated stuff. This year I actually went out and covered up some of the trees with like tarps and plastic, just, you know, seeing if I can get stuff to survive. Uh, and then the rest of them, I went out this morning with a pump sprayer and I sprayed everything down because supposedly that, that'll that work too if you catch it before the sun, sun hits them first thing in the morning. Uh, I don't know if it worked, we'll find out, but I know there were some things, like I came this direction and I sprayed, like I wanted to see if I could spray the, uh, the flowers, these hyacinths that came up, because those always turn to mush uh, when they get frozen like that. And it uh, doesn't look like spraying them helped at all. We'll see. I'll find out in a day or so if spraying the blooms, the blossoms on the uh, fruit trees saved them or hurt them. It's not looking good. All right, so while I'm down here by the greenhouse, uh, we are actually gonna get in here and we're gonna clean out the greenhouse. We've got a whole bunch of stuff in here that needs to come out. Uh, so we can get this space ready to grow in. I've got a whole bunch of coal crops. This was cabbage and broccoli and cauliflower and stuff like that that we planted that uh, we've eaten. And I just need to pull the plants out and move on. Some of them have re-sprouted after we harvested and they're working on going to seed, but uh, we're just gonna pull them out and turn them into compost. Hi, lady. Hi. I brought a bowl for the chard. Harvesting yeah. some chard? Mm -hmm. Okay. Taste this. It's sour. What is that? Sheep sour. Sheep sour. Very lemony. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the uh, wild delights that we love around here is called sheep sorrel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it tastes like lemon. It's a very interesting green. But like green lemon. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> hard to describe it, but it's, it's like it's salad sour. with a lemon dressing. Yeah, what it tastes yeah, like. Yeah, it tastes like salad yeah. with a lemon vinaigrette or yeah, something. Yeah, it's good. It's quite tasty. Yeah. All right, let's get ripping. Okay. All right, so what are you doing first? Just harvesting chard? I'm just harvesting chard, so you could rip out stuff over there. Okay, me. you harvest. You harvest chard, I will rip out. We had all that really, really warm weather last week. It was up in the 70s yeah. and everything in here was like, okay, time to bolt. Right. All right, I'm just gonna set the camera down and maybe I'll grab a wheelbarrow and I'll start pulling stuff. Yeah, you can get some. There's plenty of it. What is this? That's Doc, don't eat that. Here's you a little tender chard leaf. That is sweet. Chard is sweet, especially right now. It's very sweet right now. I can see why they call this perpetual chard. <laughs> Why? Because it's very perpetual and it's growing. Like it just took off doing its own thing. So this is a cauliflower, but what the heck is going on here? Uh, okay, tell me if any of you guys have ever seen this. So this is a cauliflower, I believe. And every single root is sending up a whole new plant. Did it go to seed? No, because it's coming out of the roots. That is bizarre. I've never seen it one looks do like that. It like mushrooms. Yeah, yeah. Like cauliflower mushrooms. Cauliflower mushrooms. That's really Yeah, every ridiculous. single, like every single root is pushing out a new plant. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take some of those off and plant them, see if they grow. Cool. Maybe That's we right. got, you know, root. Extra food. Uh, root cuttings for yeah. cauliflower. <laughs> That's uh, something unheard of. I don't know, I'll plant them, I'll see what happens. That's weird. All right, you wanna talk about this hot mess of uh, charred bed? Uh, what about it? So last year, a friend of ours had given us some perpetual chard is what it's called. Yeah. It's kind of like Swiss chard, but I don't a know. A little more tender. A little more think, tender, yeah. yeah. It's kind of like a cross between Swiss chard and spinach. That's a good way to describe <laughs> it, yeah. Uh, I mean, you can <clears throat> see just by looking at it, it looks a little more like spinach. Mm -hmm. The veins aren't so strong as uh, like a Swiss chard. So we just, had them in here and we let them go to seed and they dropped thousands of oh seed gosh. right here. They, uh, 
They, they went, they're perpetual, right? Yes, they're perpetual <laughs> now. They will always be here. Yes. And so after we'd you know, cleared out this space and planted again, uh, as soon as water gets in here, all of the seeds that were on the ground start germinating and we just had perpetual chard pop up everywhere in the walkway yeah. over here, everywhere. Uh, all over that bed. I'm loving it. And it's like, it's fine. Like it's all good. <laughs> you just like ignore it and it does its own thing. And you're like, Hey, I want some chard. I'm going to go pick some chard. <laughs> so yeah, we've uh, just kind of let it do its thing in here in the greenhouse like uh, in, in, you know, January, February, when that's the only green thing you got. Oh yes. That's it's wonderful. Very nice. Yeah, so I am picking a lot of this right now. My intention is to steam and freeze uh, a lot of this, but I also just, run out of energy easily, so we'll see how far I get with this. That's all right. Do you mind if I pull these sprouted yeah, collards? Yeah, go for it. They're going to be too bitter to use as collards, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Yeah. How about that short one over there? It hasn't um, bolted yet. I'm going to leave it. No, let's just turn the bed over so okay. we, we do that. We're like, let's leave it, and then we run out of room. and. Yeah. We, uh, we're a little too soft hearted sometimes. <laughs> sometimes you just got to rip the plants out. That's right. They might be producing or you might be able to eat them later, but let's be just honest. Gotta flip it over. We, uh, we want to grow some potatoes in here. So yeah. we got to get that. that bed turned over. Yeah. No, I didn't. Turns out I only like arugula sprouts, like the baby green. All right. I'm going to take this to the chicken coop. That wheelbarrow is pretty full. We'll just turn this into eggs and eventually compost. They're gonna enjoy that. They are gonna enjoy that. These chickens are ready for some green stuff in their life. <laughs> and before someone asks, what are all the jugs of water for? <laughs> it was an experiment and it did work. Fill up jugs of water, put them in with all of your plants and the water works as like a thermal battery. It holds on to the heat longer and disperses it throughout the night and it will actually help stop your plants from freezing. It's one of those things I've seen on the internet for years. Uh, I'm pretty sure my grandparents used to do stuff like yeah. this. And so I tried it this year. We just saved milk jugs and maple syrup jugs and stuff like that all year long and then filled them up with water. Uh, I did it with the citrus, tinting the citrus. Uh, you can see they, they're they kind of rough, but made they made it through the winter and we didn't, we didn't add any heat. We just tinted the citrus, gave them some water jugs. Same with all this stuff, all of the charred broccoli, or I guess it wasn't charred. Cauliflower. Broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, and collards. We actually got to harvest from. Uh, maybe not the cauliflower, cauliflower. It took a hard hit. It took a hard hit with one of those, uh, you know, when we got down to single digits. I'm going to quit yakking and get to work. I keep thinking of things to say. And... I ripped out all your plants for you <laughs> while you were talking. Aren't we doing the chard? <laughs> yeah, I guess I need to do that. At this point, we should just mow it. <laughs> I think I'll stick some of these by the pig pen too. All right, so here's a perpetual charred sprout. I'm actually gonna give this one a, a second lease on life and stick it over here in this little bed right here by the by the greenhouse. Oh, how about right on, on top of the fire ants? Okay, watch out, ants are mad. So I'm just pulling up these charred. Look at this one, look at the root on that guy. That is thick. I broke it when I was pulling on it. That's huge. So we're going to take these, we're going to put them in the orchard, upper orchard, various garden places. They will probably come back. If they don't, then they become compost. Like it's a win-win. We move them out of here, put them somewhere else, let them go to seed. And the idea is we will always have chard in various places. Uh, it's a green that we enjoy. bugs or go back in the coop. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She'll oblige. Board. Ooh, look at this like popcorn. I moved those uh those tarps. tarps and there's a whole bunch of roly pullies under there. She was like, oh we should get a chicken. 
So I went and got a chicken. I got two chickens. <laughs> and uh, they don't seem to mind. No, they're liking it. Like, look at that. Just like, look at this. Yeah, it's, yeah it. it's like popcorn. I think what's funny is if you let chickens hang around you enough, uh, they will gladly yes. get right under your feet because oh, yeah. they know you're going to uncover some goodies. goodies. Yeah. Good chickens. Eating them like they're going out of style. Yep. Good chickens. They're picking the roly polies. They are. They're getting them. Her chicken. Oh, Her chicken. Here, chicken. You gotta kind of chuck it to her. There you go. Good girl. All the other chickens are like, hey, where'd you go? Look, the red one is like, hey, uh, I'll go with you. <laughs> she wants to come with us again. We are gonna go run and plant these in the orchard real quick. These are all the crowns from those uh, perpetual chards. They'll either grow or they won't. So it's all good. I'd rather like save these and try to put them somewhere and do something with them than you know, just make compost with them. Like the chickens will gladly pick those clean and then they'll just decompose in the chicken run. Uh, but if we could actually do something with them, like grow more food, like move them to places we can let them just go to seed every year, it's even better. Bourbon, go grab a couple of shovels. So our bees died. Uh, they left. Well, they left, yeah, yeah our bees left. left. There's no dying. They yeah, left. they left. Um, and these are burglars. Oh, are they back? Yeah. It's usually as soon as it gets sunny, they're back. We keep saying we're going to come out here and harvest them, but they keep showing up. So harvest the honey that was in there. Well, I opened this up this morning yeah. when I was out here spraying the trees yeah. and there was no bees. Uh -huh. Like I pulled out every single frame, admired the, there's only like two frames that have capped off honey in there. There was more than that. Yeah, they've they've helped themselves. They have. I mean, it's fine. They're here. Maybe they'll pollinate our trees. Oh. I don't know. I think they're pretty concerned with robbing all the honey that's yeah, still in there. Yeah, they are. But they might make themselves useful. So there is a lot of weeding to be done, and I am not going to worry about it. I do not have the time. I only have a short amount of time today that I really want to yep. be working on garden stuff. Right. So we're going to grab all of these crowns and just stick them in the ground and see how far we can go. That was a little bit uh, out of the way for what I had planned today, but hey, you know what? That's just like the, the one of the permaculture sayings, turn a problem into solution. We turned a problem into another problem, so. How is it a problem? We had to come out here and plant like oh, okay. 800 of them. <laughs> that was a lot more. I was like, yeah, you know, like 10 of them, no problem. We'll right. scatter them through the orchard. Yeah, no, there was like 70. It did almost all four rows. It did three, three rows. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's a bunch. Yeah. All right, back to the greenhouse. All right, before I can get in here and stick some potatoes in the ground, I'm gonna clean up my mess a little bit, haul some of these uh, greens out of here. All I'm gonna do for the potatoes in here is I'm just gonna kind of open a little trench on the ground, put the potatoes in, and then I'm just gonna bury them in compost. I've got compost that is uh, pretty heavy. Uh, it was the stuff I scraped out of the chicken yard. So there's a lot of clay mixed in, but it's mostly organic matter. It's like black gold, beautiful, beautiful stuff.
I don't know if you guys could tell from that time lapse, but I'm trying something slightly different than how I usually plant potatoes. Uh, I kind of, I just made a mound. I put up a piece of string so I could have a straight line, made a mound, and then cut a V down that, that mound. And then we just stuck the potatoes in that, that mound. Really, there's no elevation change. It might've looked like that on camera, but the dirt's just doing this. And honestly, we could just walk on it a few times and it would all be back down to level and flat. So anyways, what I'm trying this, this particular time is we just put the potatoes in, kind of kick some dirt on them and then buried them in compost. And we'll probably come back and put more compost on them. I know it's nice to have a lot of compost stockpiled with another stockpile of compost coming. It's a good feeling. So we'll see how this does. Probably what I'm gonna do, I've got some coiled up soaker hose. Uh, I'm gonna run that soaker hose all up and down this because this side of the greenhouse gets a lot drier. This is the north side over here and there's a hill right here. So that drains down kind of against the greenhouse. There's a you know drainage channel that kind of just you know flows on down the hill. Well, on really heavy rain events, rain does get in here. We do get water that comes in up at the top, kind of comes down the middle and then settles in these beds. Well, that has actually been pretty advantageous to us because it keeps all of that watered. I don't have to worry about it. But this side on the other hand, we kind of built, we tried to build up on the top of the hill, but the top of the hill in our case is only about eight feet and this is a 14 foot greenhouse. So the actual drainage starts about right here and then goes all the way to the bottom of that drainage. So yeah, <clears throat> all that to say, this side gets a lot drier. This side will probably need a, a soaker hose. Something I plan on doing that I'll probably forget is I wanna come in here, I've got leaves saved up and bagged. And I wanna take those leaves and spread them in here and uh, basically start mulching everything. Glad I got that done today. That was a lot more work than I had planned that, uh, that ended up taking all day. You know, this morning, it's like, yeah, no problem. I'll plant some potatoes, I'll be done by lunchtime. Yeah, here it is, it's the end of the day. I am actually gonna wrap it up right here. So we will catch you guys on the next one.